Welcome to Coleman Daily 180. I'm Jamie Speakman. And I'm Lindsay Dulcie. Thanks for joining us. So we've got some cool weather. It's, it's very cold. Very cold. In the 20s, it's frigid. Yes. I don't know that yesterday really ever got above freezing. It was really cold. I just That's what I know. It's really cold. Yes. Too cold for Alabama. Absolutely. This kind of weather, you should be like playing in snow somewhere for sure. Yes. Well, I'm sure if it rained right now, there would be a lot of snow for us to play Actually, in. this morning, I was up early and I went outside, took the dog outside. And when I went outside, there were a few flakes in the air. So um, I think definitely we would have snow if yeah. we had any precipitation. But Plus, we never get those at the same time really yes, around here. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to just have to pay the weatherman. <laughs> I mean, what, what do we have to do to get snow? <laughs> we need some snow. Yes, the kids would like to have a day out of school that they can play. Right, so y'all had some uh, some great news come from the hospital. We did. So the Alabama State Health Planning Agency, the Certificate of Need Board, actually gave us the green light and the Certificate of Need at the hospital so that we can start on the $30 million expansion project, which we announced last June. So we are really excited. And actually, I got an update this morning Sounds like we're going to go ahead and start with our infrastructure upgrades next month. Oh, wow. So we're going to go ahead and start with a lot of that infrastructure next month. We can't really start on anything with ER expansion right away because of the time of year. Mm -hmm. This is when we have high volume in our right. ER, high sick season. So they decided to change the phases so that we can go ahead and get started. So looks like we'll get started in February. That's awesome. And, and that is really huge news. And, and I know a lot of people probably don't think a whole lot about that. But when you consider all of these rural hospitals that are struggling, closing down, but yet the one in our community is thriving. And growing. That is huge news. Yes, we're very excited. So it's gonna give us more capacity in our emergency room, which is much needed. I know I hear complaints all the time about people being in hallway beds. The reason that we have hallway beds is because we don't have enough beds to take care of patients. So you can wait in the waiting room or you can be in a hallway bed in the back where you're getting treatment. So not ideal, but that's a way that we can get people in more quickly. So we'll have more capacity um, in the back and then we'll have some more behavioral health treatment rooms right now we have three and so this will give us eight um, behavioral health rooms which we desperately need um, those patients are coming to us whether it's through prorate or um, they're, they're having issues and they need to come and then the other thing that we'll have is a new outpatient behavioral health program and I'm very excited um, that actually, we've actually already hired a psychiatrist to lead our outpatient behavioral health program. Dr. Tyler Bird finishes his residency in June, and so he'll be starting with us this summer, so we'll be able to roll that out, at least have our outpatient um, <clears throat> program um, where we can roll that out hopefully this summer. Right. All right. So you've got, you, you talked about having the hallway beds. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I know sometimes when you go to the emergency room, you know, it, it just seems like it's extremely full. You also have the urgent care mm -hmm. on site. How many of those patients that come to the emergency room, do you see a number of patients coming to the emergency room that really probably could have went to the urgent care? We used to see a lot more of that. Um, when we opened the urgent care on campus, one of the goals of that was to decrease the overutilization of the ER for non-emergent cases. Now, we still have some people that come to the ER for non-emergent, but we've definitely seen a decrease. Most of the patients that come to our ER really need to be in the ER. Good. Um, and so after hours um, with our urgent care, a lot of times we'll see more of the non-emergent after hours. Our urgent care is open nine to nine during the week and nine to five on the weekend. So outside of those hours, we do see an uptick in non-emergent, um, but we've just seen a lot of sick people. Right. Um, and so a lot of people come to the ER because they don't have insurance and so they need treatment. So, I mean, you're gonna always have that and so, anyway, the capacity, when it was updated in 2013, every time I say we're expanding the ER, people are like, didn't y'all just do that? Right. You're right. I, that, I said the same thing. So, it was updated in 2013 to add capacity up to 45,000. We're at nearly 50,000 patients a year in our ER. So, we're already five, about 5,000 patient visits a year 
over the capacity that right. it was built for. So in order to not have hallway beds, because nobody really likes that, I hope that we can get rid of them forever. But you build it and they will come. I always say the every time we expand the ER, it seems the we get more right. patients. So hopefully not. Hopefully it will um, we'll be at a good point and um, we'll have over built a little bit. Right. Um, it's so always a good thing. It is. So I'm just really excited. I think it's great for our community. It's wonderful for our hospital. Um, we continue to see growth in Coleman County. And so that's another reason that we continue right. to see more patients. Right. So it's exciting. Awesome. Can't wait to get started. Right. Awesome. Uh, so we, uh, you know, obviously we love to, you know, spotlight uh, our student athletes. And, and I know we've talked about this kid a lot, uh, especially this past year. Outstanding athlete. But uh, Jaden Sullins, we mentioned last week that uh, he was able to, uh, play in the annual blue and gray game right. that's against uh, that was in at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta and uh, against some of the top prospects in the nation um, uh, really just wanted to mention this again today because we did a story this past week on Coleman Daily. I'd encourage you to go on there and read this. But um, uh, the story, it, it, we, we made it more about his family and and the things that, you know, some of the things that they went through, the adversity that he's had to face uh, and, and to overcome all of that, but mainly about setting a goal at a young age and and following through with that goal and just watching that go. And, and, and you know, most of the time, I think kids these days, they will, you know, when they're growing up, they say, you know, I'm going to be a firefighter or I'm going to be a policeman or I'm going to be a, you know, garbage truck man, you know, something. And, and then, but by the time they get older, all of those things change and they're going down a different career path and but Jaden set his goal at a very young age to be a he he's always wanted to play, play college football and although he is uh, he's an extremely talented really three sport player he only plays two at Coleman but he's really more of a three sport player uh, just uh, seeing everything that he's overcome to be able to get to this point and now uh, signing with Navy and going to play at Navy. So I encourage you to go back on Coleman Daily and read that story. It's, it's really cool. And if you need some motivation, go read that story. I love stories like that, yeah. especially if they've overcome adversity. I, it's inspiring to anyone that has not, that has had to overcome things in their lives. Right. So congratulations, Shaden. Good job. Good job. All right, we'll take a look at this week's forecast. We're looking forward to more play dates and date nights, first checkups, and checks on the bucket list. We're looking forward to first looks and second chances, and we're looking forward to making these moments possible with the benefits of better technology and the insights of leading experts. We're looking forward to a healthier Coleman. Premier Bank of the South currently offers a variety of School Spirit debit cards. These are available to all of our customers and they're free of charge. Stop by one of our offices today and get yours ordered. For a listing of our School Spirit debit cards and our office locations, please feel free to visit us at www.premierbankofthesouth.com. All right, so 
We'll get a little reprieve. Maybe it won't be quite as cold. It looks like it's going to warm up into the 50s, which will feel like a balmy um, warm day after these right. frigid 20-degree days. So um, I don't think it's quite time to hang up our coats yet, though. I, I, I think that we need to start having, like, have some people come in and do a dance-off uh, during, <laughs> uh, during these weather uh, weather updates. Uh, I think uh, you want to do it. Yes. I, I, hey, I could, we, can, we can start that. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you do that. We can we can have people like top in and, and vote and see see who does the best. <laughs> a dance contest during the weather. <laughs> then they couldn't see the yes. weather. Yes. So some uh, sad news out of the sheriff's office. Um, uh, Elaine Rayley, she worked for Coleman County Sheriff's Department roughly around 20 years, and uh, she retired a few years ago. Uh, but she had gotten diagnosed with cancer and uh, and eventually ended up passing away due to the cancer. So uh, keep the Riley family in your thoughts and prayers along with the sheriff's office. I know Sheriff Gentry and several of the uh, deputies there were very close to uh, Miss Elaine and a very sweet lady. I can remember even back 15 years ago, some things that I was, uh, when I was doing my other business, I would have to talk to Elaine a lot and uh, always very helpful, very friendly to uh, to talk to and deal with. And, and she cared a tremendous amount about that jail. Uh, we have heard uh, success stories of people that was put in jail and that she talked to and uh, kind of helped mentor. And they even once they got out of jail, continued mentoring them and making sure they're on the right path and uh, so Elaine was definitely a one-of-a-kind individual absolutely so prayers and thoughts with her family um, so Hope Horses has their annual casino night fundraiser coming up on February the 1st at top of the town from 6 to 10 p.m. and if you've never been um, if you like to gamble it's kind of a fun way to go gamble, but not really gamble, um, and raise money for a good cause. So they have real slot machines and craps tables and blackjack tables. It is it is real deal. So with dealers and everything. So it's always a fun event. So if um, you're looking for a way that you can support Hope Horses and have a fun night out, I would definitely recommend participating yeah. in the annual casino night. Yeah, save a lot of money and then you'll have to go to Tunica or... Right. You know. But they have great prizes um, and a silent auction, I believe, um, at the event. So it's fun, good food, lots of um, fun people that attend. Um, so it's a fun night. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So this week started Saturday with um, uh, JV, and then yesterday you had a JV game and then a varsity girls, varsity boys game. But you've got the uh, Coleman County basketball tournament. Big deal. Uh, it is a big deal. And these kids, I mean, all over the county, they're busting their tail for one prize and that is to win the championship game and although you know you've got your favorites you've got your one seeds and you know a lot of times everybody just assumes that that one seed's probably going to take it all you never know you right. really never know uh there was a in the girls game last night uh west point if they played the way that they played last night they're going to be tough to handle, and uh, but uh, I think Cold Springs is the uh, number one seed with the girls. Cold Springs outstanding, Good Hope's number one seed with the boys. They play Friday night, uh, and I think they play Hansville. Hansville played last night uh, and beat Fairview in second uh, double overtime. Oh wow! Uh, very high scoring game. So uh, there's a lot of really good basketball going on every day this week. So uh, if you want to watch some good basketball, head down to Wallace and. Uh, uh, games start right around 5 o'clock, um, but head down, uh, great basketball. Yeah, go support our local athletes. Absolutely. And probably some really good entertainment, too. Yeah. I, love a, I love a tough competition yes. in any sport. Right. Valley Heating and Cooling has been servicing the Tennessee Valley area since 1975. We offer sales, service, installation, and energy solutions for all your heating and cooling needs. No one really thinks about their heating and cooling system until it quits at the worst possible time. And when that happens, you want it repaired as quick as possible, and that's what we're here for. We offer a 24-hour emergency service, so we're always there right when you need us. Whether it be a one-time inspection or our annual maintenance, we're here to keep you comfortable year-round. What if we designed a stain for your deck? 
that looked as handsome as Charles Stevens Barrow on his farewell trip over Niagara Falls and stood up to weather like this, or this, or even this. If a stain can make your deck beautiful and survive any amount of torture, is it still stain? Arbor Coat from Benjamin Moore. Find Benjamin Moore Premium Paint. Available now from your local paint experts at OF Richter & Sons. All right, so we have a few things going on at the hospital. It's that time of year um, when we really start focusing on improving overall health. So um, our third annual Rock the Red National Wear Red Day um, Ladies Luncheon will be on Friday, February the 7th um, from 11.30 to 1, and it'll be at Loft 212. And if you wanna come get information about better heart healthy eating, um, signs and symptoms of heart disease for women, um, health screenings. It's a, it's a lot of fun, um, so make plans to attend that. And if you want information, you can go to our website or you can call our office. Um, we have another heart um, education seminar in February. On February the 20th, we'll have Dr. Tracy Neal come and talk to us about a new test that we now have available through our imaging center with the new CT um, scanner that we have, you can actually have what's called a calcium scoring test. So calcium um, and plaque are essentially the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's a CT of your heart and it tells whether or not you have a lot of plaque buildup, which shows whether or not you're at risk for a heart attack. So if you're at immediate risk, I don't think you're quite old enough, Jamie, but um, about in your 50s, um, it's a great test to have. So you can come and hear Dr. Neal talk about what you need to know and if you qualify for that test. Does it count if I feel 50? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. I mean, okay. <laughs> um, then we also have um, our prostate cancer screening. We have a free screening through our urology clinic on February 10th. You have to have an appointment for that. So um, risk factors for prostate cancer are family history, if you are over the age of 40 um, and you're male, and um, if you're African-American over 40, you're at higher risk. So if you fall into any of those categories, we encourage you to call and make an appointment for a free screening. And then our heart screenings, um, heart health screenings that we do in the Colonel Coleman room, those start back up on February the 6th. So lots of chances to find out if you're at risk for any of this stuff, to catch it before it becomes a problem. That's what we want to do. We want to catch it before it means an ER visit. So uh, that's the purpose in all of these. So, all right. All right. That is all we have for today. Thank you for tuning in. See you next week.